All right, this is my barbershop bio plus. It was a dark and stormy night. Yeah. <laughs> I was born in 1945 in St. Cloud, Minnesota, just prior to VJ Day. Some of you know what that is. Um, growing up, I always liked music. I had sisters who were 10, 10, 11 years older than I was and a brother who was one year older than I was. I fancied myself, uh, well, my sisters had a record collection uh, of some of the popular people at that time, Patti Page, Teresa Brewer, Von Monroe, or M M Mitchell, or whatever a bunch of those people were. Frank Sinatra. Frank, well, Sinatra was among them. Um, so I, I, I loved uh, the fact that my sister played piano, and we had a piano in the living room. Did, did a lot of people have pianos in the living room? I, I suspect they did. Um, I loved when my sister would play saber dance, okay? Uh, something that I wanted to learn with the Commodores because it was suggested. To me. <laughs> I fancied myself as a pretty good yodeler. Um, um, my mother also played piano, and once in a while I would play Wild Irish Rose, which was the closest association I had with the with, uh, barbershop at that time. My other sister took me to musical movies like Student Prince and The King and I. I had 12 years of Catholic school, during which time I sang a lot of Latin music. <laughs> but rock and roll made the scene in the 50s, so uh, Frankie Lane and Patti Page and Guy Vaughn or Vaughn Monroe, Teresa Brewer, Frank Dean and the crowd took a back seat to Elvis, Buddy Holly, the Big Bopper, the Everly Brothers, and Jerry Lee Lewis. In the early 60s, my brother and I made a trip down to the big Sears store on Lake Street where he bought a silver tone guitar and amplifier. I took to it and soon had a repertoire of Buddy, Buddy Hobby, Holly songs, and I was in, an in-demand performer at clandestine high school parties. <laughs> Life has many diversions, and while I picked up the coronet in my first year of high school, I had to make a choice to play football instead. Big mistake, should have stayed in band. But I followed after my big brother. I did keep strumming the guitar and singing as I started uh, college at St. Cloud State in 63. I really enjoyed playing whist, widow whist, hearts, and euchre at the Chatterbox and the Student Union. So much so that the academic dean thought I should take a break from college endeavors in the fall of 64. I guess being an architect was not in the cards, so to speak. Oh well. My mother was not happy with me, however, and told me that I would have to get a job. Fortunately, Finger Hut Manufacturing in St. Cloud at that time was hiring, and after a short stint as an order picker, I was promoted to forklift, where I excelled. To the point that they again promoted me to assistant supervisor and gave me a raise to $1.15 an hour. It was now 1965 and my brother and friends had listed into the Army Reserves. I tried too, but they turned me down. Hypertension, they said, whatever that was. After flunking out of college, flunking the Army Physical was no big deal. Oh well. <laughs> Still strumming the guitar and singing some Kingston Trio and some of the English tunes, the job of Fingerette had the benefit of working a lot of overtime, so I accumulated some savings. My brother had found a 49 Chevy sedan and then a succession of other vehicles, among them a 60 Rambler and a Studebaker Commander with the Buick Bearcat engine in it. Speed was of the essence. I, however, had my eye on a new Ford Mustang. So one day I trotted down to the 1040 Ford dealership and ordered, factory ordered, a 1966 Ford Mustang Fastback 289 cubic inch, four barrel, four on the floor, with wire wheeled spokes in the rally package. All totals came to $29.95. I paid cash. The car was delivered in the fall of 1965. I was now part of the drag scene. It was me against all comers, Chevelles, Impalas, Barracudas, Bolts 442s. Daytonas, 
GTOs. Great fun. I went through a set of double red striped royal tires inside of a rear, inside of a year. Lots of second, <laughs> second gear rubber was left on the road. Somewhere in 1965, I got a gig playing guitar. I was still working at Fingerhut, and so was uh, Irv. And Irv had an accordion band called Irv's Accordion Band. <laughs> we had a lot of weekend ballroom gigs playing the polka circuit. I don't know if that prepared me for what was to come, but in early 1966, I was approached by an acquaintance, Denny, who invited me to play bass with a group that was forming in Faribault, Minnesota. I didn't have a bass, but he did. So he taught me a few fundamental patterns, and the next thing you know, I'm in an eight-piece show band called The Green Men, doing soul and rhythm and blues from the likes of James Brown, Wilson Pickett, Otis Redding, Ike and Tina Turner. It was a gas. At the onset, I met the seamstress who would sew the band jackets from a single pattern, size 38 to size 50. Her name was Sheila. She measured me up and evidently liked what she saw. <laughs> Although the burgundy Mustang also caught her eye. So we'll really never know. The year went fast and so did our romance. By early 1967, we were married and the eight-piece group was coming to an end. There's a lot of ways to split the pie. We dropped the horns and continued as a five-piece club group. Oh yeah. And a baby was on the way. By the end of 67, the Green Men were no more. So, with time on my hands, it was decided that I would give college another try. With a newfound determination and support from Sheila, I redeemed myself and graduate, graduated with a BA in Sociology and Psychology in the spring of 1970. Within a month, I landed a job with the Minnesota Department of Corrections, whatever that was, as a parole officer, whatever that was, for the next 10 years. That took me then to Hennepin County Court Services as a probation officer in 1980, where I worked full time until retiring in 2003. All totaled, 32 plus years. So now it gets interesting, and you thought this, inter this story was gonna be short. My old friend Mark Sazy, who some of you remember, a former Green Man, had mentioned this barbershop thing a couple of times to me, and how fun it was. I finally succumbed to his urging, and so one dark and stormy night, no, it wasn't, a, it was dark, but it wasn't stormy. But it was dark, and it was March of 1999, and I picked him up to go to JCC, only to find that the meeting was at Christ the King <laughs> that night. We made it there, and in the gym was the Minneapolis Commodores. Dan Smith approached me and welcomed me and handed me the music for Red Red Robin and You Were the Only Girl. Hmm. Well, I can read words. After all, I'm a college graduate. But you remember I chose football over band. I saw a lot of notes, but didn't recognize which was what. I did like the melody line, so I guess I chose to be a lead. Anyway, I came back and soon after was hooked. They also had learning tracks that really helped an ear guy. Chapter meetings were great, but even better were the afterglows at the Golden Valley American Legion, where I was coached to the finer points by the likes of Carl Pearson, Lloyd Marshall, Pat Collins, Mark Conlon, George Johnson, Bob Dykstra, John Hansen, Bill Shaw, Jim Windy, Wes Haddlestead, Dick Playstead, Jim Richards, just to name a few. Back at the meetings, I fell into the hands of Joe Hauser. He already noticed my potential as a riser crew guy. It wasn't long before I found my way on the board as a member at large then to secretary, then to executive VP, and by 2003, I was president. Hauser also talked me into the show, show chair of 2003, saying, I did it, so can you. The theme was around the world with barbershop. Bob Dexter played the travel agent at the Tip Top Travel Agency, 
Denny Roloff rigged up a ringtone, and at one point, Harden Olsen was on the other end of the line saying, can you hear me now? <laughs> I debuted with a uh, as a tenor with the Jolly Time Chord Poppers, Carl Pennard, Carl Bladel, and Rod Vink, and we sang San Francisco Bay Blues. Hauser, in the meanwhile, just couldn't get me involved in enough activities, so he began to pick me up at work over the lunch hour to bring me to the Friday lunch bunch. Somewhere along the way, George Johnson decided to give the bag and treasury to myself and Ray Lacombe. But Ray left me holding the bag. <laughs> then Dykstra had some lame excuse about having to play golf on Thursdays, and he handed me the duties of the lunch bunch. It's not easy being me. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to the Commodores, I'm still on the riser crew, but just to let you know, my hard work with risers paid off and won me the bow tie in 2006. Or was it 2007? Little did I know that I'm now on the bow tie committee, and I guess that's till death. I did sing in another quartet with Mark Conlon, Dave Spidell, and Dave Casperson called the Metro Chords. It was short-lived as Mark went off to sing with the Arpsichords. During a few uh, of my years, I have stood by Mary Dick's piano getting voice lessons for tenor and lead. I remember one afterglow when I proudly announced that I had learned all the tenor parts to the Polecats to Bob Dykstra. And he replied, well, sing anything you want, but sing lead. <laughs> Good piece of advice. I've been with the Commodores for two internationals, uh, 2007 Denver and 2009 Anaheim. So been there, done that. I've held more board positions committee assignments and chairs over the past few years, and my most recent adventure was chairing and putting together the 2017 annual show themed Pop, Rock, and Doo-Wop, 22 songs in an hour and 10 minutes. And as a bonus, I got to play bass with the Rockin' Doors, composed of Paul Swanson, Andy Richards, and Matt Richards. Oh yeah, I'll be back strumming the bass at our next show Pitch Pipe Perfect on April 14th at Bethel. Get there early to hear tunes like Tequila, Walk Don't Run, Sleepwalk, Green Onions, and some more. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, I'm still quartetting with Harvey Weiss, Andy Cook, and Jim Johansson in a quartet called Bomp. Can't believe we're going on our third year as an organized doo-wop quartet uh, with a barbershop flavor. We will be competing this um, division contest with barbershop tunes. And uh, I'd like to sum it up by saying it's all about the afterglow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.